Oh, look, there's dogs. Uh-oh. They don't look super nice. Bad doggy. Hey everyone, today in this video, we're gonna be checking out the Insignia 32 inch smart TV. This is the Fire TV edition. I did purchase this product myself and any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product, you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. You can see the retail box and packaging right here. Check it out, walking us through some additional features you can see on the back side right here. This also features a voice remote with Alexa built in. And if you're wondering, the resolution of this TV is 720p. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the contents and you can see we have the screen itself behind me right here. First up, we got a lot of product literature with instructions showing you how to remove it from the packaging, child safety information. We also have our installation and quick setup guide available in multiple languages. You can see it right here walking through everything you need to know about getting the stand installed or mounting it to a wall how to make different connections for HDMI, AV, and coaxial cables, analog, digital, and ethernet as well. Flipping it over to the back side, you can see some additional information right here, walking you through being able to turn on your television, completing the on-screen setup, and getting familiar with your voice remote with Alexa. They also have their customer service contact information right here. This also comes with a one year warranty. Next, you can see we have two included AAA batteries for the Alexa remote control. You can see the remote right here, it looks really nice. So we got our Alexa button up top. Then you can see down at the bottom, we have four popular streaming apps we can quickly get to. You can see it from the back side. And then we just go ahead, we just slide this whole back off to install the two included batteries. Very nice, I like this remote a lot. Next, you can see we have our included power supply cable. We have our two feet for the TV if you wanna use the included stand. And we have the four screws to get the stand installed. Now let's go ahead, let's look at the TV up close. Here's a look at the back of the TV first. You may or may not notice, we actually have a dented panel in the back. Now I find that unusual because the shipping box itself is in pristine condition and they do a really good job packaging it in place. So I'm wondering if that happened before it ever made its way into the box. You can see over here, we have our AC in for our power cable. Pay attention, we do have a nice little indent here for the cable, but I wish that that channel went all the way down or out to the side. Other side, same thing for our different input options. So let's tilt it up so you can see them right here. We have three HDMI ports with our HDMI one port being our eARC support. Then we have our USB five volt optical audio. And you can see we have our headphone jack. We have some more options right here at the bottom. You can see for these ones, we have our ethernet port, RCA connectors, and we have our coax connector if you wanna connect an antenna or your cable. Then you can see we have our power button right here. You can get an idea too, looking at this way for the thickness of the TV. We can also flip it up. You may notice it's narrower at the top and gets wider down here at the bottom. Now we'll turn it around and we'll look at the screen as well. So you can see the screen right here. Everything looks nice. We have a pretty thick bezel as you'd expect with a budget friendly TV, the insignia logo and branding and an indicator right here for our power and input options. And you may notice our energy guide sticker right there showing us around $9 a year for your estimated energy cost. Now let's go ahead, let's get the stand installed. So the feet are marked left and right. It's really faint, but you can see right in there, if it'll focus in, there's a little R letting us know this is the right leg. So they are side specific, but obviously you can just guess if you don't wanna read that or can't see that, you'll know this one won't go in on that side. So you're left taking the other one, it just slots right in. Now you're going, you're gonna take the two screws, drop them right down in using a Phillips head screwdriver and fasten them in place. All right, so there you go. You can see we actually have both legs fastened in place right here so we can flip the TV around you can see what it's like standing on its own right there. Very basic legs, as you'd expect. It's just gonna stay in place. There's no additional height adjustments or anything like that. So what you see is what you get. Now let's go ahead, let's plug it in, power it on, and check it out. So we got the TV plugged in, powered on. This is the first screen you're at that you can select your language. So let's choose our language here. Now it's gonna scan Wi-Fi networks. So you can see the different options that they have here. So go ahead, choose your network, or you can skip this step for now. We're connecting to our network right now. It should just take a couple of seconds. 
Now you can see it's successful and it's working on updating the TV for us. The TV just updated. Now you can see we're at this screen where we need to select the experience that we want. So we have the full, which is what they recommend. Live TV, thousands of channels, apps, and Alexa skills, over 1 million movies and TV episodes, Alexa voice control and search, and you have to sign in or sign up for a free Amazon account. If you don't want to create or sign in with your Amazon account, you still have an option to select the basic setup where you get access to live TV and five streaming apps. In this video, we're gonna set up the full experience here. So now we're prompted to sign in with our Amazon account, so you can select that and sign in or select the plus icon right here to create an Amazon account. So we just signed in with our Amazon account. There's a couple of different ways you can sign in. So you can either scan a QR code or go to a website and manually enter a code. Both are really convenient. I highly recommend scanning the QR code. It's super simple and it auto populates the code for your TV. Next up, you can see we have a couple additional settings. We can choose to restore our Fire TV from other settings. Maybe you're upgrading a TV and it has your stuff saved. You can do that or you can select skip. In this case, let's go ahead, let's select skip and we'll start fresh. And now you can see our next screen is our parental controls. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna leave those disabled. Next up, we have a prompt for some kid-friendly content. You can subscribe if you want. We're gonna select no thanks. Now we have a screen where we can choose our streaming services. If we don't want to, we can select no thanks right here, but let's go ahead, let's select get started. And now you can see they populate some popular streaming services. So let's go ahead, let's add Disney Plus and Hulu. Then you can see we got some additional options that will require cable login. Next, some sports apps right here. Let's keep going. Then you can see we have some additional services if we wanted. So let's go ahead, let's press the play pause button to continue on. Go ahead, select finish. Now you can see we're on our welcome screen, going over a couple of quick settings for you. Select got it. And now you can choose who's watching the TV. You can create additional profiles if you want. And here we go, our home screen just populated. Let's go ahead, let's look at this in more detail. So right at the center of the screen, this main bar is usually where all of your settings and everything you wanna access is stored for you. So obviously we've got the home icon right there. To the left, we have our search option. We have a search bar. We have different tiles so we can search based off apps, free movies, TV shows, sports, things like that. They also have some additional recommended categories for you. Then you can see to the left, we have our input options right here, our three HDMI ports, our antenna, our composite, and we have our media player if you want to take advantage of the USB port. Then to the right, we have our live TV right here. You can see we have our guide, anything that we recently accessed, sponsored placement, then you can see featured live TV apps, free live TV channels right here. Then you can see additional Prime Video channels, and we have more options and settings down here at the bottom. Pay attention right here, we have our channel scan settings. If you want to attach an antenna to get free over the air channels in your area, that'll vary obviously depending on where you live and what's available and how good the reception is, but you have that option right there if you want to use an antenna. And then we can go up, you can see we have some additional options here. We have our My Stuff, so basically our bookmark section that we can save everything. Then you can see some of the included apps and some of the apps that we've downloaded right here. We have additional app settings so we can view our apps or the app store. And then you may notice we have our settings gear icon bringing up more tiles for us, showing us all the different settings and options we have to control and configure with our TV. I'm not gonna go over each individual setting here. There's a lot of information that you can play around with, but I do wanna show you a couple of things. The first one is our display and sound section. So we can select that and you can see it brings up our picture settings. You can long press the home button from anywhere to access your picture settings. This will vary depending on the input that you're using. So this is input specific. Then you can see our sound settings right here, similar process again. So we can change our sound mode, surround sound and more. Then we have our display settings, power controls, audio output, our audio mixing. If we want navigational sounds on or off screensaver settings, then you can see our HDMI CEC device control. We can turn that on or off depending on what our preferences are. So that's really nice that we have that right there. Next, you can see we have our Alexa settings. So this is really nice because they let you know what you can try with the included remote control. So let's go ahead, let's bring that up. You can see the different questions we can ask. Check your calendar, music, smart home devices, volume control the video, discover music. You get the idea here. There's so many different Alexa controls. 
You can launch apps. So very, very nice that we have our built-in voice assistant to make navigating this TV that much more useful. And it's all just right within the remote control. So you don't have to use the arrow keys and try to find what you're looking for. You can just ask Alexa. Open YouTube. So you can see it's pulling up the YouTube app for us right now. Check that out, there we go. So turn volume to 25. Check that out, just adjusted the volume for us. Let's go ahead, let's try something else. So what's the weather? Currently, in Amelia, it's 84 degrees Fahrenheit with clear skies and sun. Today, you can expect mostly sunny weather with a high of 90 degrees and a low of 71 degrees. So you can see, very simple to use the voice control. Now let's talk about streaming content with this TV. So first up, we got a YouTube video. We're gonna watch a couple seconds of this Music Chef music video. The song is titled Low Key off the album Golden Hour. It's DMCA, stream safe music for content creators. So we're also, while we're streaming this video, you'll see some of the image quality right here and how everything looks being streamed via Wi-Fi to our TV. But we're also gonna adjust the volume setting here so you can get a feel for how the built-in speakers sound. So let's go ahead, let's give it a listen for a couple of seconds. Currently at 30. Now we're at 50. Seventy-five. They sound good, I can actually hear bass, which is nice. Now we're maxing out at 100. So compared to the smaller version of this TV, I really feel like there's a noticeable difference in speaker quality. And keep in mind, we have a camera on the screen, so the screen's never gonna look that good. You might see some lines and things like that. That's not actually visible with your own eyes when you're looking at the TV. That's just the camera, the lens, the sensor, and the TV screen not getting along with each other. Now let's go to the TV guide right here. Let's stream some live TV. So we're gonna pull that up. You can see we're in the live tab. Then we select guide. This will take us to some of our free options we can stream right here. So you can see what we have. All of our channels are selected. We have a lot of news. So we'll cycle through. Judy Justice too, let's go ahead, let's press this one. You can see it's from the app Free, formerly IMDB. So we just pulled it up. Again, this is free content, we didn't sign in or anything. Don't have an account or profile. You can see it's loading right now. There we go. Check that out. They are not afraid. I actually have three dogs at home that ride with us. But our dogs also don't bite our horses' faces. I still don't believe that we're responsible for the situation. They were chasing Everything looks before. great. Now let's look at our picture settings here. So let's go ahead. Let's hold down the home button. This is going to bring up our quick menu settings right here. So we have our channel guide, inputs, apps, sleep timer, picture, sound, and display. You can also see we have some additional info. So let's go look at our picture settings right here. You can see we have different picture mode options. Keep in mind, you may see like a dividing line right here. This is grayed and blacked out for the menu. That's actually not in the picture itself. But you can see we have our different picture modes and all the different settings that we can tweak depending on the mode that we're in. So you can see those settings right there. Let's go back. Let's choose a different setting besides standard. So standard, then we have movie. You can see movie changed the color a little bit. Just pay attention to this side as we cycle through them. Then we have dynamic. So again, it changes the picture quality. Natural, same thing. Then we have game. Look at that, that really made a difference. Then we have PC. And then we have our custom settings that we can choose and tweak. But let's quickly cycle through those again so you can see how everything's looking depending on which picture mode and setting you desire. Just choose whatever one looks best to your eyes. It's that simple. And if you're still not happy for some reason, go ahead, 
spend a lot of time and customize it to your desires. Now you're looking at the UFO test on our Insignia 32 inch Fire TV. Again, the resolution of this TV is 720p and it's 60 hertz for the refresh rate. So you can see what different FPS values look like at that 60 hertz refresh rate. Obviously, if we can match the refresh rate with our content, we're gonna get that smoothest playback experience. And this really just shows you the importance of having a higher refresh rate TV. If we could have 120 or beyond, this would look really smooth and really nice. That really is more important if you're trying to use this TV for gaming and you want to push that FPS value with your system or your computer. This is what you can expect at 60 FPS and 60 Hertz at 720p. Speaking of gaming, you can see we're at the app store right now where we can actually game on this TV. So there's a little game tab that we have selected right here where we can browse different games we want to purchase or download for free. So let's go to top free. Let's select a game. Let's pick Asphalt 8. This is a racing game. We can select that. You can see we have the option to download it. We already own this game, but it is free. We just have another Fire TV, which is why it's saying that we already own it. You can see it's downloading right now. It'll be ready very quickly. Let's go ahead, let's load into it and try it out. All right, so Asphalt 8 is loading right now. We're gonna drive a couple of seconds in this race so you can get a feel for gaming on this TV. Now, what's crazy is with this TV, again, it's pushing all the graphics right now. And this game's really intensive. So you can see there's definitely going to be some noticeable sputtering, things like that. I wouldn't say the movement's great. Not like a console or anything like that. So you're not going to be blown away. But technically... You can game on this TV with the free apps or paid apps. Obviously, the less graphic intensive they are, the better experience you're going to have. And it is cool that we can just game right on the remote control. We don't need a controller or anything else. Let's see if we do a little barrel roll there. So I just feel like there's some sputtering, staggering. Like I said, there's a lot going on with this game. Definitely going to be maxing out all the processing power that this TV has for sure. Now we got a little avalanche there, it looks like. But you get the idea. You can see how everything looks. Now you can see what the gaming experience is like if you're not using the TV itself to game through a free or paid app, but if you want to connect a console or a computer to it, this is going to be what you can expect. Everything's way smoother. This is Forza 5, so another driving and racing game, so you guys can see the difference. There's not as much sputtering, anything along those lines. It's doing a much better job because the TV is just focused on displaying Everything that you see, it's not actually powering the game as well. That's being offloaded to your computer or your console. Now we're looking at Rainbow Six Extraction right here. So you can get a feel for slow movements, different lighting environments. You can see the characters on the display. We got a waterfall as well that you can see. We've had some explosions. So fast movement, slow movement, constant movement. 720p, 60 hertz for the refresh rate. Let's see what happens here. There's another explosion. So whether you're playing a driving game, shooting game, this is what you can expect. Now we got Borderlands 3 pulled up right here. You can see we got a shootout on screen, how everything looks. 720p, 60 hertz. With this larger screen size, I do want to add that it would be nice and beneficial to have 1080p. The 24 inch version of this TV can get away with not having 1080p due to the smaller screen size, but especially if you want to play games like this, you would appreciate having that greater pixel density to really take advantage of what your game has to offer. Now we can't forget about next gen consoles. While they're overkill for a TV that spec like this, I did want you to see what it's like to have it connected. So with our PlayStation 5, we're getting 1280 by 720 at 60 Hertz on this TV. All right, and check it out. We're now looking at Fortnite on the PlayStation 5 right here. We're gonna spin around, do some fast movement and motion. Not trying to make you sick, just want you to see how everything looks as we're gaming right here. 
So check that out. Not bad. Oh, look, there's dogs. Uh-oh. They don't look super nice. Bad doggy. You get the idea though, right? You can see with the movement here. Not bad. Ooh, there's some really fast movement. Getting some shield too. All the movement motion, just pay attention to that in the graphics. Colors look good. Everything's very responsive. better than I thought it would be. Now when you're gaming, there's something I wanna show you that's important. I can't stress enough, if you want the best results with this TV in your gaming, be sure to change the picture quality to the gaming setting. So currently we're just in the standard setting right here. I have an input lag testing tool and you can see the results that we get on our display right now. So around 70 milliseconds for our input lag. Now let's go ahead, let's switch this to game mode and see the results that we get. Now that we have game mode active, let's go ahead, let's look at the results right here. You'll see it will reduce the input lag. So down from 70 to around 48 milliseconds for our input lag. Now keep in mind compared to a computer monitor, those are usually around one millisecond or so, give or take. So there's still a pretty substantial difference with input lag on a TV versus a monitor like that, but it will make a difference for you swapping between your standard image mode and choosing the gaming mode and option when you want to game. Now let me share with you my final thoughts in regards to the Insignia 32 inch Fire TV. This is coming from somebody that owns the 24 inch Insignia version as well. So the first thing I noticed was this TV feels more responsive and fluid than the 24 inch version. I'm not sure internally if they have different components, that could very well be the case, but it feels more fluid and responsive. But I would argue the 24 inch version looks a little bit better because we have a smaller screen size also at 720p. I think that bodes better for that model than having the larger screen size in the same resolution. This definitely should have 1080p. Now don't worry, they do have 1080p models out there. And at this price point, if you're looking for just a TV to have maybe in your kitchen, your bathroom, your garage, your workshop, the basement, kids room, things like that, that's where this TV really excels. You're not gonna break the bank and you get tremendous value with Fire TV built in. My favorite feature, having Alexa built in directly to the remote control. It's just really a nice and enjoyable TV to use. I can also add a couple opinions on the Fire TV operating system experience coming from a Roku user. So I still prefer Roku. That's the operating system of choice that I recommend everybody. It's basically the iOS of TV operating systems. Really clean, simple to navigate tile interface. And I just find it not as cluttered as the Fire TV because you can see up at the top, you know, almost half our screen is devoted to basically advertisements. And then the bottom is, you know, entwined with sponsored content and things that I would say populate that aren't necessarily relevant to us. Whereas I wish majority of the screen, they reversed it. So we had all of our apps and things that we use right up here, you know, more than half of the screen, I'd argue the whole screen it should be. And then some of those sponsored recommended content, things like that should be tucked away at the bottom. Now I totally understand why this is the way it is, but as an end user using it day in and day out, that is something you should consider. But again, for some of you that are already Amazon customers, maybe you're a Prime member, things like that, you want that deep integration so you can get a better user experience.